Hey guys, welcome back to Keys to the Cosmos. I wanted to do sort of a special video, something a little different. Uh, yesterday marked one year into this hobby of astro astrophotography and Google reminded me with this picture, kind of a dumb picture, but I took it, I'll never forget, I took it that very first night out. Um, the night I went to sort of, I just got my star tracker and my DSLR back from the getting astro modified and I was just sort of testing it out, getting to know my equipment. I didn't get an image that very first night, but uh, I definitely learned a lot. And I remember that feeling of, um, you know, all these videos I had watched on how to pull her line and then trying to do it yourself for the first time. And, you know, that feeling of over being overwhelmed. And then, and then once you got it going and what I thought was focused, I'm sure I wasn't, but then trying to find a target. Um, that's before I'd really discovered Stellarium and apps like that and... Uh, yeah, the frustration the very first night, thinking I would just find uh, Andromeda or whatever it was I was looking for that night. Which, by the way, Andromeda really isn't even in the sky until late at night this time of year. That's probably why I couldn't find it right away. But yeah, that first night, just, it reminds me, that picture always reminds me of those feelings I had. And, and yeah, I just wanted to sort of do a, pic, an, a video on kind of looking back and then looking forward. What's next? What do I look forward to learning? Do for the channel and, and stuff like that. So I'll try to keep it brief. But basically, yeah, I just want to reflect on this year. It's been an amazing year, um, especially with all everything that's been going on with COVID and everything. You know, I think this, this hobby really came at a good time. And it kept me engaged and, and challenged and learning new things. And uh, I, it's, you know, made what would have been a, a much more difficult year a lot better. I can definitely say that. I'm sure a lot of you can because this, this hobby has gone crazy right now. So many people are taking it up, and um, hence the uh, the demands not being met for you know equipment and stuff like that. It's really hard to get equipment. Of course, that has a lot to do with distributors, distributors, and all that. But the demand is also crazy high right now, and that's great. You know, if there's one positive thing that that is, and, and people have taken to hobbies like this, so it's been it's been great in that sense. I've enjoyed it so much. It's great because astrography is, you know, there's levels to it. And along the way, you get sort of that satisfaction of seeing progress as you go. And I've always sort of had the message with this channel, it's astrophotography made simple. So it doesn't mean that I'm always going to stick to a DSLR, a star tracker, you know, and a small telescope, a small refractor. Though I will always continue to do that. And astrophotography made simple will always be the sort of the theme of this. Um, we are going to graduate and we'll talk about that shortly. I am going to continue to grow and, and implement new things, but we'll always keep it simple, as, at least as simple as we can. And hopefully I can explain it in a simple way, in a way that relates to you. And as well, you know, going back to the basics, I'm always implementing a, a DSLR in my astrophotography. I want to switch to sort of a, not switch, but bring in a, a full frame DSLR. And as I mentioned before, I've been using an APS-C crop sensor, a, sort of a lower end camera. I'm hoping to get a, a much higher quality one and uh, full frame, so a lot wider view and a lot more light to collect. So I want to, you know, see the difference and, and make a video about that. And um, yeah, it's just something different, but I do like going back to a DSLR, using a DSLR. It's it's just so self-explanatory, you could say. It's, there's a screen there. You can see exactly what you're shooting, live view, all that Um but there are some changes uh, that I've already started to make in implementing new equipment. I've had a lot of this equipment for months now, actually. But I've just sort of started, I wanted to take this uh, hobby, as I mentioned, step by step, increments of, of progress, and just sort of continually look back and see progress that I've made. And that's sort of what, you know, I've been doing along the way. I've been uh, reshooting, especially now that I'm into my second summer, reshooting targets that I shot the first time around and, and trying to see the progress. Um, you know, I got a lot of satisfaction out of those first shots, the first uh, attempts, but now to go back and do it and see, you know, the, the progress that I've made and the improvement, that gives you a lot of satisfaction. That's what's so great about this hobby. It's not about comparing yourself to others. You know, there are some guys have been doing this for years and they're just, you know, unbelievable picks, but it's more about your own progress and seeing that the, the you know, the improvements that you've made. And that's why I'm kind of big on printing a lot of my pictures. They don't print all of them, obviously, um, but it helps to see progress. It's easy for something to look good on a small phone screen or on Instagram, and that's fine. 
um, if that's all you do. But when you when you blow something up, when you print it on a bigger size, whatever, 12 by 12 or if it was 12 by 16 or 18, that's where you really see um, where you need to, especially on the processing side, where you need to make improvement, where you need to make changes. It shows it, the, your imperfections are a lot more glaring. So uh, I'm a big fan of it. You know, sometimes I print them and they're terrible. I'll be honest with you. Um, I would never try selling it to someone, that's for sure. But it looked good on my phone. And so it reminds me I need to, you know, to improve more. Not everything has to be a giant print. Obviously, it's very unforgiving, but it does, like I mentioned, it helps you really see the progress you've made. And uh, in the last few months, I've really seen that difference with, with prints. They've improved a lot, and um, it's it's really helped me. You know, and that's not for everyone. Some people don't bother. and um, But for me, I found it's really helped me to improve. So that's one tip I would give. You know, along the way, maybe print the odd picture, one that you're particularly proud of, and really see on the 12 by 12, what does it look like? Um, you know, how good are those details and, and your stars and stuff like that. So that's one thing I would say. And just enjoying the ride, you know, don't don't be in a rush to use the, the latest and greatest. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it if you do. But for me, I've sort of been, as I mentioned, I, I, I purchase the equipment when it's available or on sale. But I'm not necessarily in a rush to, to use it and to implement it. I'm, I'm sort of enjoyed the, the steady progress. Um, for now, it's been the focus on longer integration time. You've probably noticed um, now a lot of my images are 6, 9, 12 hours and, um, and focusing on the processing side. So going forward, um, you know, I definitely want to um, progress to the point of using like a more professional mount. That's on order. I've had that on order for seven months. <laughs> It's been a little bit frustrating for sure, but as I mentioned, this hobby sort of exploded and combine that with, you know, distributors struggling to get product out, you know, this is what's become the normal now. So I'm hoping to get that really soon and that's going to open up a lot of doors. Uh, I want to have two rigs going, you know, my star tracker with a DSLR and a small refractor and then my new rig with a little bit bigger telescope and something like this, an Astro dedicated camera. Uh, I've actually used this on my next image. You're going to see it in my next video, so there's a sneak peek. Um, I've started to implement this, but uh, definitely a little bit more challenging. Um, I think a lot of it depends on your approach. I've had help by one of my buddies. Shout out to Mike. Um, I appreciate his help in, in using not so much this, but what I was getting to is the um, you need to use a computer with an Astro ded dedicated camera. You see there's no screen on it. Um, there's not even a power button, so you need a computer. There's no intervalometer that goes with this. A computer does all that for you or ASI Air which we'll talk about in a, in a video very soon which is just sort of a Raspberry Pi based computer that does all that stuff it's extremely powerful um, and it runs a, a camera like this and uh, handles your exposure times and all that stuff so um, I've already so that's sort of been my next step into astrophotography is learning to use an astro dedicated camera um, I'm still going to go back to a DSLR, so for you guys that are using a DSLR, don't worry about that. I'm hoping most nights I'll be shooting with a DSLR as well. It'll also give me an opportunity to compare what are the differences. One of the biggest things with an, a camera like this, and it, this is the actually the ASI 294MC Pro. That Pro refers to this fan on the back. This fan is a cooler. It um, keeps the camera at a constant temperature, generally in the negatives. So we've talked about before with uh, DSLRs, especially when you're doing longer exposures, and especially as in the summertime when it's already muggy, you get a lot of thermal noise. So thermal noise um, is caused by heat in the camera chip sensor. Um, as you go throughout the night, you're taking picture after picture, that starts to really heat up, and you get graininess and hot pixels. And that's a result of heat, thermal noise. So this, a camera like this, is what helps get rid of that. So. It's also a little bit more sensitive, the chip. We'll talk all about that. I'll make a video all about using that. And sort of my approach that's really helped me to um, sort of switch from a DSLR to an uh, Astro dedicated camera. But yeah, that's been my first step. I'm looking forward to getting my mount using a, big, a little bit bigger of a refractor telescope. And as well, of course, my Edge HD, which I have that video. Hopefully you were able to check that out. Haven't had an opportunity to use it because of the mount. Um, but looking forward to using that. And yeah, using uh, the ASI Air, um, it's been fun and challenging, uh, as 
how things are with this hobby, but um, you can sort of see the next step, and that's exciting. So, yeah, eventually I want to have two rigs, and, you know, each night I'll be able to shoot a different target and have something more content for the channel. Also, I'm going to have a lot more equipment reviews. Once I get my new mount, you know, a review on this camera, what I like, what I don't like about it, and some other things as well. So look forward to that. I know people tend to enjoy the equipment reviews. So I look forward to making more of those. But yeah, that's sort of what I look forward to is is just sort of constant uh, improvement um, and using new equipment and increments. Uh, also, obviously, the, the other thing I haven't really gone into yet is guiding, which is um, basically using a secondary telescope, a very, very small one, and a camera. And so that's what it helps keep your uh, tracking as accurate as possible and it allows you to do longer exposures. So as of now, I've been limited to between one and two minute exposures um, because I'm just using a star tracker unguided. But eventually I will delve into guiding. I have all the equipment. I just haven't got around to using it. But that's something that the ASI Air will help control as well. So now that I have that and I'm starting to use it, I'm, I'm a lot more open to you know starting guiding. The mount I'm getting is definitely a nice quality one and it's supposed to be able to do up to five minute exposures unguided. So I'm looking forward to that because there's some nights where I just won't feel like doing it. And that helps with my theme of keeping it simple. Sometimes you need to spend a little bit of money, but um, you know, it helps, allows you to sort of do things a little bit more simple, especially when it comes to setting up two different rigs. That's a lot of work. And um, you know, so guiding is something I'll, I'll you know, sort of delve into next and I'll have videos on that. And hopefully I can help you guys when you, who are also looking into getting into guiding and, and shooting those longer exposures. And just on the processing side quickly, I'm looking forward to not only improving with Photoshop, but maybe starting to learn a new program, something like PixInsight um, or Astro Pixel Pro Processor, APP. Those are, not that Photoshop's not powerful, it's a very powerful program, but it's not really meant um, specifically for astrophotography, whereas those programs are, they have a lot more features. Um, but the problem is it's a big learning curve. It's very steep. So. I'm sort of hesitating to do that, but eventually I will, particularly when we get to more rainy weather, um, you know, maybe fall into winter, I'll uh, take the time to learn that, and of course I'll make videos on that as well. So there's so much with this hobby, you know, it just depends what direction you want to go, but I want to just emphasize that if all that you can do or afford or whatever is a DSLR with a camera lens or a, a small refractor, you know, that doesn't mean that you can't improve and that you can't continue to progress. You can create, you know, beautiful images. I'm, you know, these aren't award winning, but I'm still very proud of them. And I'm going to have a, 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 pic, a video after this, at the end of this video of sort of my progress in pictures from summer of last year, summer of fall last year to targets I've reshot and just, you know, sort of a collage of, of those images um, just to help see the progress that I've made. And hopefully that encourages you if you're just starting out. Don't worry, you don't need you don't need to get super expensive and crazy, you know, com complex equipment. You can still create amazing images with uh, a star tracker, a DSLR, and a small refractor or camera lens. It comes down to your processing skills. That really is, I always say half, 50%, but I think it's even more. Obviously, you need good data, but, um, you know, focus on getting good data, but you're going to need more integration time. And the longer you spend, or you can focus on getting out to darker sites, getting out of these light polluted skies. Yes, we've talked about filters and things like that that enable you to shoot in light polluted skies, but it doesn't mean it's still going to give you the best result. You cannot replace a dark sky. So if you feel that you've sort of plateaued, go out to a darker site if you're able to, you know, plan it out, especially come summertime and spend a couple, two, three long nights out in the darker skies and just see the improvement. I guarantee you, you will see a big change. I haven't even really gotten out to darker sites other than um, my row picture, but I want to do that a little bit as well. But, you know, if you're, if you're limited with what equipment you can use, you can always change, hopefully, you know, your environment and go to a darker site and just see the difference. That light pollution, you'll see firsthand that light pollution has and these aggressive filters that we're forced to use, they really are limiting um, the results you're able to achieve. So there's so much you can do even with the simplest of equipment. So that will always be the theme of this channel. We're never gonna get into super complicated stuff or you know, high-end expensive equipment and people can't relate. I always wanna keep this relatable and never forgetting 
where I started and, you know, the progress and, and, and still improving with that simple equipment to help you guys as well. So that's where I want to go. And just, I think just for me, I, for my goals, just hopefully give myself a little bit more time to set up. Sometimes I've been rushed, particularly when you're looking for a new target. I haven't done it for a while and I just did it, um, got like three nights ago. And man, I got frustrated. Like I was looking at Stellarium and I thought I knew exactly where it was and I, I started looking for it and I can't find it. It's a small target. You're going to see it's coming up. Not in this next video, but the one after. And it just sort of reminded me, you know, just when you think you learned or you think you got it, um, there's another challenge. There's always another challenge ahead. So giving myself a little bit more time to set up and that way as soon as it's dark, I'm polar lined and I can start looking and I'm, I don't feel so rushed because when I'm looking for a target and I can't find it, I'm thinking, oh man, I'm losing valuable time and that gets me more frustrated. So if I can give that tip to you as well, give yourself time, particularly in your first few you know, nights out, give yourself time to set up, get the equipment out early before it even gets dark. And then if you're able to, of course, and then as soon as dark, start polar lining, make sure your mount's balanced, all that stuff, do that ahead of time. And then all you have to do is worry about polar lining and finding your target. And, you know, finding your target can, when you're not, when you're finding it manually can be uh, the most challenging and time consuming part. So give yourself time and I think you'll find you'll enjoy it a lot more. But I just want to mention to you guys, before I show the final video here of some of my images, feel free, you know, to mention in the comments, what do you want to see a video on? What are you, something you're struggling with? Um, an equipment question, you know, I may not be able to answer from experience, but uh, it's, I'm happy to research or maybe it is something I'm, I'm familiar with or I've read about before that I can help you with. I don't pretend to be the expert. I'm still only a year into this, but I've tried to soak in as much in, uh, knowledge and information as I can. So um, if you find that you relate to my videos, which is probably why you're watching, you know, and there's something that I can explain that maybe you'll understand or, or you know, help you out with, feel free to, to do that. Mention the comments or you can message me on my Instagram at keys to the cosmos, all one word. Or you can even email me, keys to the cosmos 81 at gmail.com. Um, I'm hoping as well to work on my website. It's very basic right now, but eventually all these videos I want to put into pages and have specific targets and everything you need to know on the website for those targets, where to find it, how to process it, and all that. It takes a lot of time, and you know, when I get around to it, hopefully soon, I want to slowly uh, build up the website as well. But these are all goals that we slowly, you know, work on, you know, day by day, week by week. But I have so much more to offer on this channel, guys, and I'm looking forward to sharing it with you. As I mentioned, uh, new equipment, new um, targets, new processing tips, and you know, combining all that to keep astrophotography as simple as possible, but at the same time, continue to progress. So I hope you guys enjoy it. Thank you. I want to take this opportunity as well. Thank you for your support. I really do appreciate it. And keep your comments, your questions coming. I'm happy to help wherever I can. And that's what this community is all about. So thanks so much, guys. Here's a few of my images from the last year. And I look forward to the next video. I'm going to have a new target, uh, one I've never shot before, and using my Astro Dedicated camera. So that's exciting as well, as well as the ASI Air. So I'll be touching on that. But that will, will lead to a lot more videos to come. Thanks again, guys. I will see you on the next one. Take care.